to this conversation now. Statistics South Africa's latest population numbers have revealed a 1.33% growth, taking the country's population to 63 million. Gauteng remains the most populous province with almost 16 million residents, followed by KZN with over 12 million. Stets SA says the number one driver for population is an increase in birth rate. That's about 2,000 babies born in the country every day, as well as the lower mortality rate. But what does this growth population or growth in population mean for you and me? Joining me now for this conversation is Soli Molai, who is the Deputy Director General responsible for social and population stats. Mr. Malloy, uh, thank you very much for your time. Let's begin with uh, the population of this nation. There are less people who are dying compared to babies who are being born every day. What's driving population growth in South Africa, in your own words? Thank you so much, uh, Claudia, and good evening to the viewers. I think maybe let me start by answering your question by explaining um, how we calculate the population in South Africa. Mm. So the first way or the, 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 what we do is that we, do, we conduct what we call a census. So you are probably aware that we have done our census in 2022. Yes. So the country conducts census every 10 years. So with the census, you go to the household, you count the people who are in the household, and you come up with a count. And that was the count at 2022, the same population is sitting at uh, 62 million. But because we know that census is expensive, you can't do it on an annual basis. So in between censuses, you do what we call it a media population estimate. Mm -hmm. So the media population estimate, this is how we are compiling it. We use the data that is coming from the admin records. In this case, as you have mentioned, then you're looking at the beds, meaning you're looking at the number of babies who are born, going to home affairs, we get the numbers. We're also looking at the number of people who have, uh, of, 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 of have died uh, with the, your deaths. But then you're also looking at the night migration. Night migration, night, night migration, you're looking at those who came in and those who came out in South Africa. So those are the three components based on the admin records. Then we come up with the number, uh, hence we're having a 63 uh, million. Yeah. So the, as you have mentioned, that the beds are the main driver of population growth in South Africa. So we're sitting around 1.2 million when you compare uh, from the previous year. With uh, 2,000 babies born every day, Mr. Molai, is that a good or a bad factor for the economy? I think as a statistician for us, uh, whether it's good or bad, uh, uh, for us, it's for giving the nation and also the policymaker this stats because what we do is just mining the data and providing the data to the police. So uh, whether it, it is a, a high number or a low number, for us, we're just providing the number as it is. Yeah. Again, I suppose then the question I was going to ask you next, you are going to... Uh, take it and lay it at the door of planners. The question was going to be the population estimates per province. So we know now that Gauteng is the most populous, but is that something that allows for policymakers to plan better, especially uh, with uh, the rising issue of... Um, it's called the cost of living crisis. Economically, this is becoming a challenge, is it not? So, looking at the 63 million, and you look at uh, in terms of provinces, as you are right from this, so uh, Gauteng is sitting around 15.9 million. And we have seen over time, actually, Gauteng has had an increase. Um, um, it's one of the provinces that is having an increase. Mm. And followed by KZN get 12.3 million, and then followed by Western Cape. So the three provinces combined, 56.8% uh, of the 63 million, they're actually residing in three provinces. Mm. And you know that Gauteng is our economic hub. And you also know that Gauteng, in terms of the land size, is the smallest province. So 
I think in a way what I'm trying to explain to you that the, the, the majority of, of population is sitting in Houting, and if, in terms of uh, the land side is the smallest size. What else? Northern Cape, which is a, it's got a mass land, but in terms of population, it's sitting at 1.4. Mm. So the popula our population is sitting in only on three provinces, whereas the other provinces, in terms of their population share, they're actually dropping, uh, especially uh, um, uh, Eastern Cape and Limpopo. We are seeing over time that most of people are coming from Limpopo that are actually coming to Kaute. Yeah. When we talk about the Northern Cape, I'm glad you've raised it because it is the province with the... Uh, the least amount of people, I think 1.4 million. So is it safe to assume that it is because of uh, the lack of job opportunities there and that's why there aren't many people? Is that a correct assumption? 100%. Uh, one, one of the things that we're doing in this product is that we're also looking at migration. And we are seeing that Houteng is a preferred destination, even for migrants um, also. Um, their first uh, preference destination is Houteng, then followed Western Cape. And we know that that's where your communica hub it, it is. So um, it is, uh, it's a question of pull and, pull and push factors. So the, where there's uh, economic opportunities, uh, population will move or migrate to that particular area. Yeah. Let's then talk about um, the population growth in relation to the impact it has on public services. This could be uh, health services. This could be education, housing. Are you able to tell us how those services, for example, are affected? Okay. So if you look at the, the total fertility in South Africa, Let's start there, Piet, really. maybe so that I can give you context in terms of how I'm going to respond to your question. So the total fertility in South Africa has been declining uh, over time. Uh, we are sitting around to 2.4 uh, in terms of our total uh, fertility rate. We haven't reached what we call it a, a replacement fertility, but we, we, we're sitting at uh, 2.4. What we have noticed is that if you go to provinces like Limpopo, Eastern Cape, and, and even Northern Cape, they they are recording what we call it the highest uh, uh, fertility rate, around 3.3.3.18, uh, which is higher than the, the average. So the, the, this, is, this is also an indication of how the population dynamics uh, uh, display itself in provinces. Mm. When you go look at the question that we are asking in terms of the impact in the health system, one thing that we have noticed um, in, in South Africa is that the life expectancy at birth is actually have improved uh, good. And this has to do with, uh, firstly, the rollout of the IRV, IRV pro program, which also meaning that there are more people who are living longer and healthy. Mm -hmm. And then also what we have also noticed that the life expectancy during the COVID-19 period, it drops and then it now uh, have improved, which also one can also contribute to, to the rolling out of the the uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccine. The last one, which we are also seeing also as an indicator, which is also an indicator for the SDG, is the infant uh, mortality rate. Actually, it has actually have declined uh, over time. So we're sitting around 28.6 20, per 100 life beds in 2024, mm. which is also a, 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 a significant drop when you compare to your previous uh, yes, when you look at in 2020, uh, 2006, where we're sitting about uh, 78.2. So those are the three indicators that also show you that the, our health system is actually performing much, much better. Hence, we're seeing an improvement in terms of our life expectancy. Yeah. Uh, another important factor here, Mr. Malloy, is migration. This is an issue the world over. It's not unique to South Africa. When you count the population, therefore, are people who are in South Africa but are foreign to the country, so they are here legally, are those people counted versus those that are here illegally? How do you treat your uh, statistics based on the people that are in your country at a given time? This is, as you've mentioned, this is a very typical um, component of this analysis, uh, the migration. So for both for census and 
also for media population, we are not able to estimate um, the undocumented uh, because we don't ask for the legal status. Mm. So as you know, when, when you come to your house, we don't ask you to, we don't request you to give us your documents. So we're just counting the number of people who are in, in, in the borders of South Africa. Um, but what we are doing in terms of this product, we look at documented, because we're going to home affairs, we're looking at their, uh, um, their, their records. We're also looking at other administrative records like your SAPs. We're looking also at, um, um, and also education. We, we, we even do um, look at other censuses in other countries, like for example, your New Zealand, your Australia, because you will able to pick up how many South Africans are also visiting uh, um, or are migrated to those uh, particular countries. That on its own, it will give you a sense of how you can actually adjust your number to give you what you call it a migration rate and can able to calculate uh, what you call it a net migration. But then we are not able to give you undocumented in terms of um, whether it's in terms of their legal states. Yes. Soli Malai, let me thank you very much for your time.